Everybody ready? I do hope you're as excited as I am for the first episode of Render Wars, where you submit in your finest render work to compete head-to-head -head with other graphical gurus, not only to flex your skills, but also to win votes from the audience for a chance to pass through to compete in the season finale to win a yet unspecified prize. If you want your work to be featured on Render Wars, hit up the link in the description of this video for instructions and guidelines on how to enter, but let's not waffle any further, we have a Render War to fight. What? Before we start, and I'll mention this just once, unless it becomes a bigger issue, during the Render Wars shows I'll be both complimenting and critiquing aspects to the submissions, which I think could bring improvements, uh, but it's worth pointing out that many of the submissions will be from people just playing around and experimenting with CGI, so in some cases I'm well aware that the author may not have been too concerned with those finer details that I might suggest, so if anything my commentary is just either for entertainment value or maybe for other people to absorb and apply to their own renders in the future. So if I point out something on your render which you didn't do because you either didn't have time or didn't feel the need, honestly don't worry about it, there's no need to get in touch to explain. And kicking off the series in style is Manless Theophilus, casually wheeling out this Lego Star Destroyer. Uh, this looks like a key shot preview render and I think we can all agree it's pretty tasty. I'm loving the crispy resolution, it's nice and sharp, the earth backplate is very well tactfully placed, offset slightly to the right gives that illusion of genuine perspective, it's just, it assists with telling the story that this destroyer is kind of headed for Earth with the express intention of scoring a bullseye to your nipples. The occlusion in and around the model is nice and fluffy soft, it's well detailed, which is difficult to do in dark scenes and it doesn't get much darker than actual space, so well done Manalist for that. Uh, and now post-processing is allowed in Render War, so I think a nice subtle nebula style visual or a few artificial galaxy stars might have added to the space vibe. Uh, being picky, the light source is over here on this side of the destroyer, which implies that's where the sun is, with it being in space and all. Could be moonlight, but let's not look too much into it. Uh, but that side of the Earth is in shadow, so perhaps maybe rather than moving the light source, the back plate could have maybe been mirrored. Uh, but I think the thrusters really could have made this one extra special. Uh, they look like they've got some kind of local light source, which is a nice touch, but at the moment it looks like Homer Simpson peeking through a peephole. A little bit of motion blur, an artificial blue light coming through, uh, could have hit the jackpot but overall it's a quality render. And Manalist actually sent in 42 renders, all of which are solid so it's hard to pick just a few, but this one here jumped out at me, strategically titled Old Lamp. The biggest compliment you can give any render is being unable to immediately detect that it's a render, and on first glance this one needs a double take so well done Manalist on that too. Uh, it looks like either Keyshot or 3ds Max maybe, the lighting's delicious, it's crisp, zero noise, uh, the reflections on the lamp glass are bob on the money, the backplate is appropriate and matches the theme, good job. On closer inspection, a couple of minor improvements could have been made to this one to make it magnificent, like the shadow direction on the model doesn't match the background shadow on the backplate. Uh, that always lifts up the skirt and exposes a render, and the lamp just doesn't quite sit right on the edge of the table, the perspective there's a little off whack, but overall it's a good clean pro looking render, thank you very much Manless for sending these in to Render Wars. <laughs> And next up to fire shots on Render Wars is Jess Neal from Idaho. I I Idaho once didn't work out. But, but what? We don't learn in hearts. Yeah. Owner of CAD contracting company Modern Forge LLC. Awesome surname, by the way. Jess is a major long term subscriber at TFI. He's been around since near the very start, so you know his modeling is going to be legit. Each and every render from Jess here was done in Inventor Studio, so he's at an immediate disadvantage there. Uh, but these renders are for a trailer. He's de It's a caravan, mate. It's not a trailer, it's a caravan. caravan. Uh, for a caravan he's designing, everything from Jess is modelled and rendered in Autodesk Inventor. And it's actually not bad given that Inventor Studios is a steaming pile of cow feces. The render's never going to win any photorealistic awards, but if your aim is to present the conceptual look of the product to a prospective buyer, and then it's likely just the job for that. Shadows are on point, colour temperature's nice and warm, the, tra the caravan stands, although defying the laws of physics with its lack of a front wheel support, it looks tantalisingly menacing, like it's going to bust out a transformer morphing to some ED209 robot of death, but if Jess was trying to achieve a realistic accurate feel then there are some fairly quick tweaks he could have made here, uh, like for example using a different array of textures, the tyres a little bit too deep black which loses a lot of detail in there, a modest amount of reflection maybe on the body panels would have given the scene a bit more immersion, a few more ray tracing passes perhaps would have cleared up the grain in the ambient shadows under the arch, but if the goal was to just deliver a conceptual image of a product under whip design then it's a good effort for sure. 
And Jess also dabbles in a bit of jewellery design on the side, modelling up these earrings in Inventor, then 3D printing them for the wife. I'm sure her grace was most intrigued. I'm not sure how I... I, I'd be interested to see how these came out printed in the end, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's an interesting render though, likely done with Inventor's freeform modelling tools. The visual shows the contours of the design quite nicely. I'm not going to lie, mate, this one looks a little phallic. <laughs> I can't unsee and look past the faces in the holes. Uh, but it's a good effort for Inventor Studio. Thank you very much, Jess, for entering. What? Now, next up is the mighty powerhouse, that is Niels, hailing from the Nether Netherlands. Uh, nice first name, by the way. Niels has run the three-year-old weekly contest that many of you may have seen before on the official Inventor forums known as Friday Pictures. So basically, Niels is about to race some bars here on Render Wars. And can you even believe that this guy only does rendering as a hobby? I mean, check this out. Finished in 3DS Max and its new Arnold renderer, Niels nabbed the figurines from the net and built this scene around them. He modelled up the glass bells and Inventor, ported them into Max, dropped in the flower and then went ham on it. And seriously man, this is good enough to frame and hang up on the wall man, are you kidding me? The colour and detail retained in those figurines is exquisite. The texturing on the wood base and table is as good as flawless. The depth of field past the glass leading into the flower is just magically creamy. The reflections in the glass convince you that the table is situated next to an actual real window with a net draped curtain. If this one doesn't make you moist, I have no idea what's wrong with you. And for critique... <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the nipple handles on the glass bell could be more handle-shaped and less booby-like. And uh, uh, look, uh, well played, Niels. Well played, sir. And if by reasons unknown to me that didn't have you nursing a semi, a romance explosion is imminent with these additional stunning renders, again, mostly modelled in Inventor and rendered in 3DS Max. Starting off with a World of Warcraft-themed Cinderai or a Blood Elf dagger fit for the mighty Kelthas Sunstrider himself. Yes, I need to get out more. Uh, just look at the glow on the stone underneath and the red and green emerald detailing. It is amazing. The scene is intentionally hazy and dusty, which to me seems to have maybe borderlined on looking like image noise little. Either way, it's an intentional atmospheric effect so it is there on purpose. And the dagger blade from this angle does seem a little thin, but these are unquestionably a couple of beautiful renders. Uh, Neil sliding in to finish off the job with that max power and some glorious glass-based renders here. I mean, look at these. Using the new Bifrost engine in Max 2018.3 with fluid dynamics, Niels is experimenting with this stuff at the moment, but I think we'd all agree he's done a sterling job. And honestly, I cannot wait to see where he takes this as he continues to experiment with the bleeding edge visualization tech in 3DS Max. Niels, please send in future submissions. Uh, thank you very much for entering into Render Wars. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for a very, very special final entry. Closing Render Wars Episode 1 with a glimpse of what I can only describe as immortal genius, rarely seen beyond the walls of the world's most prestigious art galleries. It is my esteemed honour to bring you this next submission from the portfolio of one of the world's finest and most respected digital artists. And I cannot actually believe I'm saying this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Louis M. Esquire. Throughout Render Wars, we're going to see many people conjure a sense, a taste of existence and being from a fabricated presence. But what Lewis has done with this piece is blur the boundaries of contrast between absoluteness and truth, extending a hand of hope to all of us in a time of judgment in a manner in which touches the very essence of our souls in a raw emotional context. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated for a signature Louis M. Esquire masterpiece titled Lochtalgar, A History of the Ages, A Story of Time. Now, words cannot do justice to a piece which truly invokes raw emotion, but being inspired from the Art Deco age, the story this piece tells begins with a charted map of human development from the flat arable pastures of our humble beginnings through the sands of time to the industrial revolution represented by this effigy of an iconic industrialized chimney structure. Luis then captured the history of mankind throughout the most turbulent era of our existence. The deep crimson-like consistent tone running throughout this piece represents the bloodshed of our iconic world wars. He could almost weep as he can hear the cries of a million tormented souls fighting for freedom and for the abolition of oppression. And what moves me the most is the persuasive, iconic, gut-wrenching reflection of the past, with the dividing shadow representing our ancestors and forefathers watching over us. Many have hypothesized they protect us, but a forever reminder that they were there, demanding that you stop to indeed reflect on our history, what we've done, 
What has been sacrificed for all of us, mantra lest we forget it, our past and sin shall we forever fight in vain. Luis used the inspiring white blinding light in the distance as a means to recreate the watchful eye of the divine heavenly lord, not hindered or segregated by faction. The elevated cube structure with divine boundaries reminding us that we are but beings confined inside the walls of our mortality. And then the chilling symbol negative, symbolizing how fragile life really is and how it can be dashed from us should we become complacent again in the face of caution, in the presence of our maker. Luis has captured and conjured and told the story to us via this beautiful piece lifted from his portfolio. And with that, we are left with one unanswered question, which has stifled the greatest minds in human history. What, what, what is why? What? Hi, thank you to Manalist Jess Niels and Louis the Great for being a part of Render Wars episode number one. Please take a literal five seconds of your time to hit the voting link in the description of the video and dedicate three clicks of your time to vote for who you thought brought the best render to the wars. The winner from each show will be entered into the season finale for a chance to be crowned Field Marshal of Render Wars. Field Marshal, I'm still thinking of a title. I will work on that, but please cast your votes. Thank you for your time and I'll see you uh, on, on the front line in Render Wars. See you next time. Toodles.